In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we'd like to show you the quick way in which you can export one or more frames from a video as photographs and edit them in PhotoDirector. I'm in my library button on the left side. I'm going to press the V key on the keyboard for video and that will open up my file system. I can navigate to the video I want to use and click on it. Let's go this one here and now I load my video. Now we're going to use the first of the six options you see on the screen, capture video frames as new photos. So I'll click on that. Here I have my video. I can actually click on the button at the bottom to play it and I can hear it. If it has audio, this one doesn't, but it will move frame by frame through my video. I can move forward and backward by clicking on the little arrows, next frame and previous frame and that will allow me to move one frame at a time. If I have a certain frame that I want to use, I can click on it and identify it that way. If I've found a single frame I want to use and I only want to use one frame, I simply click on the camera icon and that will capture the current frame. And now it puts it in the panel on the right. And we have an eye here on the lower left that gives me more details about it. It actually puts it up there full screen and I can click and move one frame at a time from one snapshot to the other. But notice here, I don't have any. I only have one, so they're grayed out. I'm going to go back. Let's just grab another frame. I'll move this little player over. You can either play the video or you can move the white triangle on the line, on the slider line, to get to the frame you want. And I'll click again. And now we have a slightly different one. You notice it leaves a yellow mark wherever it captures a frame. And we have the time code on the left side indicating exactly which frame you've captured. Right now, my marker is at 9 seconds and 9 frames. And if I click here, that is the frame that will be caught. If I want to start all over, I can simply click Clear All at the upper right. And it will make them all go away and I can start over again and capture as many individual frames as I want in my particular video. I can delete a single frame by clicking on the X in the upper right corner. You notice it preserves the time code on the upper left corner of the thumbnail. So that's how we can get individual frames that we can use as photographs in our project. And so if I like what I've done, I'm going to click on Go to Library. Now it will give me a place that I can locate it. It suggests I use a subfolder called Motion Stills. I can pick any subfolder name I want. I can click on the three buttons to change the actual folder in my file system. Now I also have an advanced button that's important. Let's click on that and see what we find. Here again, it gives the same information. I can change the destination using this screen. But here I also can change the size better quality and less quality, and the file type, JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. So this determines what kind. And I can also keep the original resolution, or I can resize to fit. And then we have more on naming format. Down here, you can add a prefix, you can add a start number, and apply during import. If I click on that option, we can put copyright, and we can put a tag on it if we want to. So we have all these features that we can use on the capture settings. I just right, right now want to make sure it's JPEG. I'm okay with that. I'll click on import. It will take the images I've got, turn me back to Photo Director. When I click on this button here, I see we have these three images. And I can edit one or more of them any way I desire and continue on. Now this is only one way you can do this. Let's look at the second way we can apply this same technique. I'm going to do my V key for video again. Let's take a different video. Let's take this one here. I'll do the same option, only this time what I want to do is I want to have a group of frames turned into photographs from this particular video. If we look at the button here, we have the scissors and we have this roll of film. What happens when we click on that? Let me show you. What this does is it allows us to change the range in the video from which the particular frames will be turned into photographs. You can change the start and stop in one of several ways. You can take the little marker on either end and drag it 
and one will be the start and one will be the end. We have the start marker here in the thumbnail and the end marker here in another thumbnail. But you notice we have the time code. 9 seconds and 21 frames is this one. If I move this to the right, you'll see the numbers change in the time code. You'll also see the entire duration change. So you can control it by changing the start point and the duration, or you can change what's called the mark out or the end point. This does not affect your original video, it just makes a copy that you work on. Let's say I want to start in the range that starts in about, say, 11 seconds. I'll click on here and now I'll type a zero, so I'm exactly 11 seconds in. And let's say I want the duration to be 4 seconds and 0 frames. So I just type in that top box and now it goes from 11 seconds to 15 seconds. I'm going to click on OK. Now when I go back to this screen, if you look very carefully at the time code on the left, with the little pointer arrow on the right, it's at 15 seconds. I go back to the beginning, it's at 11 seconds. So now this is the range that I'm working with in order to extract these frames and turn them into photos. I can extract a single one anytime I want by simply clicking on the camera and it'll do what we saw before. The other option I have is I can use the auto button. Let's see what that does. I'll click on auto. This says how many frames do you want to capture? Now it automatically reads that I have 30 frames per second. I have a total of 120 frames. You multiply the number of seconds by the number of minutes we have. So I could put as high as 120 and get 120 different images. I don't want to do that. That's too many. Let's say I just want 10 frames. When I click on 10, it will divide the time by 10 and give me 10 selected frames from this particular subset of the clip that I've trimmed. So I'll click on Start and the selected frames will be removed. That means it will ignore the one that I already had in there. I'm fine with that. We'll click on it and watch what it does. You see the little yellow ticks? It's going to take those frames in that sequence and give me 10 separate frames that I can use or edit. If I, I look at them and I say, hmm, I don't want this one here, I could just click on the X in the upper right corner and it'll remove. I could do that with any others, but you notice as I click on those, these little yellow markers disappear because it will take them out of the sequence as well. So if I remove that one and remove this one, now I just have a handful left. We take this one out and I have five left. I do the same procedure I did before. We'll do go to library and it says motion stills, same subfolder. I'll click on, I can click on import. Same as go to library and I see that I have six of these that I can edit or discard any that I want and put them in my project to edit as individual photos captured from frames in that segment of the video that I was using in PhotoDirector 365.